Growing up on a zoo was absolutely incredible. Obviously a really unique life. I'll never get over the amount of people that were just like, wait, you live at the zoo? And obviously you have some pretty unique neighbors. Very noisy, like the lions, but uh, there's not too much you can do about it. I think the thing that you cherish the most is the opportunity to grow up around such incredible species and the experiences that you can have because of it. I think to really learn about the natural world in the way that I've been lucky enough to do so by being so hands-on throughout my life is probably the thing that you know I'm, I feel exceptionally lucky about. So I think one thing that growing up on the zoo really gives you is a more unique perspective on my life because of the fact that you are learning so much more about animals than a general member of public would. It's not just that you're learning the general facts about these animals and how they live, it's also building bonds with unique personalities that these animals have because they're all individual just like humans are. I think that you get some absolutely fantastic facilities and zoos around the world that do phenomenal work that are generally trying to preserve the natural species that we have and share this planet with. But at the same time, you do get that darker side of the profession where you know, it's frustrating because you get painted with the same brush. So everyone assumes every zoo's bad when actually it's not the case. One thing we always say as a family, in an ideal world, zoos probably wouldn't exist but because of the threats that are facing animals that sadly I've seen kind of first hand, good zoos are needed in order to obviously keep conservation and animals going. The craziest story I can remember, and this is way back in the early 90s, one of the keepers one day had left the camel gate open and the camels actually got off site and were running down to the local village. My granddad had been out off site. He pulled up to this T-junction just down the road from the park. Uh, three of the camels went running past. Then you saw a couple of the keepers chasing them on foot, and then you had a couple of the park vans. My granddad always just says it's probably one of the most comical things he's ever seen. I'm very pleased to say the camels were totally fine. They just went into a field nearby. We just herded them up and brought them back to the park, but that's probably the funniest thing I can, uh, I can remember from when I was a very, very small child. There's definitely things that I've feared about the animals that I've worked with. You don't want to get on the bad side, especially if it's like a huge snake or, um, or a venomous animal. The last thing I want to do is end up in with a big cat because it probably wouldn't last too long. I mean, look, at the same time, you build up fantastic bonds with them. Obviously, it's all protected contact, so we're not going in with uh, any of the big cats or anything like that. So I, I, I think, yeah, just making sure I'm not on their bad side is probably the, the thing that I uh, obviously try to steer away from. So I've been very lucky to travel to quite a lot of parts of the world. I think from a personal standpoint, our Drive for Wildlife project is probably the thing that my brothers, my family and I are all most proud of, um, just because of the impact we've been able to have over in Africa, not just in one country, but across four different countries over there, which is awesome. For example, our animal ambulance that we've donated through Drive for Wildlife has helped to rescue already hundreds of animals, which is absolutely fantastic. And the prospect that we're trying to help Uganda wildlife authorities, you know, reintroduce lions to parts of Uganda where sadly there is a huge plight of lions. It's also something that we're very, very proud of and you know, hopefully we can continue that line of work long into the future. I mean, the first trip was fantastic just to go and see the work that 
people in Africa are doing, you know, and it was inspiring to see that, you know, there are now lots of women in Africa being allowed to get involved in conservation and that local communities out there are really starting to want to protect their wildlife because they realise how important the wildlife is to their country and obviously to things like tourism and the economy and stuff like that. The first trip, for me, the highlight, which is also probably the saddest moment we had on the trip, was we met the last two remaining northern white rhinos in existence. And to actually meet a species that is officially declared extinct, it stays with you because you feel incredibly emotional, knowing that because of humans, this is it. These are the last two remaining, and they're both female, so sadly, unless we can get IVF to work well, there's going to be no more of the species left. So it was a real kind of emotional, tear-jerking moment. Being a caretaker here, it's emotionally draining. And it's like working on a project that you know it's deemed to fail. And every day you're waking up, looking at the eyes of these animals, and extinction is calling them on the other side. <laughs> uh, no, definitely not, um, and I hope I never get associated with that name. I'm just the guy who's a part of an incredibly dedicated team that are doing their absolute best to take care of animals um, in the best way that we understand through science and research and trying to help conservation around the world in the best way that we can and obviously educate the hundreds of thousands of visitors that we get to our parks and millions of people that view our social media channels every year. So that, I'm just part of a very dedicated team, that's all.